Hello and welcome back. We are in day 13 of the My Tea Lean Time Omer edition, where we're counting up to the excitement of Shavuot. Each and every day or night, depending on where you're from, we have the opportunity to join together to delve into another Perek of Tehillim and see its connection to the Sefira for the day. And today, we focus on Yesod. My name is Orly Wava. I'm the founder of Abraham's Legacy, where our mission is to create technology that enables us to serve Hashem as one. And the Abraham's Legacy Tehillim app is a unique app. And it's created in memory of my grandfather, Alava Shalom Avraham Ben Polin. It allows people from across the globe to complete books of Tehillim in unison, in real time, and in all different languages. And with over a million chapters of Tehillim read, just shy of 20,000 members, this is truly an incredible community dedicated to connecting further to the power of Tehillim. And for those of you who are joining for the first time, welcome. It's great to have you. And for our regulars, welcome back and keep it going. Please make sure you take the time to spread the word. Share about this program with your friends, with your family. We're going to be going strong until May 22nd, until Shavuot. And you can see our agenda at abrahamslegacy.com slash sign up, where when you sign up, you'll receive an email prior to each talk. And if you missed any and this is your first time coming and you want to see one, don't worry. We got you covered. All of the talks are recorded. They're uploaded to our YouTube channel, to our website, and they're available starting from 24 hours after the event. We have another wonderful speaker for you tonight, but before that, I just want to thank all of you for being here live. I want to thank all of you also for your just incredible support. I, I, for those of you that I, that I know, that I've spoken to, that I've connected with, I can't tell you how much I love you and how, how much I look forward to this time that we have together every single day. I also want to thank our sponsor for the event, Etila, 100% Pure Copper and Etila Cup, which is going to be part of our raffle. I want to thank my dear friend, Naomi Jerno, who has helped me put all this together. But above all, I want to thank Hashem, the true CEO. I just happened to work for him. And I've been very, very, very grateful for the opportunity to do so. In tonight's agenda, we're going to hear from our speaker, Mrs. Rifki Katz. And she's going to be focusing on chapter 122 and 123 in Tehillim. And if you happen to have any questions, be sure to you know, jot them down, list them, whether you want to put them in the chat or whether you want to ask them after the talk is over, you'll have the opportunity to do so. And right after that, make sure you stay on because we're going to be wrapping up, of course, with our inspiring six-minute Tehillim read through the Abraham's Legacy app. So this is a really unique experience, and I encourage all of you to do it. For those of you that have a smartphone, do so. Grab your smartphone, download if you haven't already. You just have to look for Abraham's Legacy. Uh, in the App Store, but I'll be show, sharing a small video for those of you that are new to this, explaining exactly what to do. So not to worry, we'll do that right at the end. And uh, finally, now we're on to our main attraction, and I'm honored to introduce today's speaker, Mrs. Rifki Katz. Rifki and her husband run a yeshiva in Los Angeles, and she is the co-founder of Welcome Mashiach, which is a global network of Jewish women uniting to hasten the Geula. Such a beautiful thing. You could learn more about Rifki and the wonderful work that she's doing at unitedforgeula.com. I'll make sure to put the link here. I know that she has a few things going on right now as well, uh, different programs. She'll speak to you a little bit about that, and we'll be sure to share the link so you can follow along. So without further ado, I give you Mrs. Rifki Katz. Thank you so much for being here with us. Morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Naomi, for inviting me again. Um, for your wonderful Tillam Festival, which is beautiful timing during these days of Safira Saomer, and especially the times we find ourselves in, we all know the power of Tillam, which we are now feeling more than ever that we are saying the words of David HaMelech, and he said that when we say Tillam, he is saying it along with us. And the Tzemach Tzedek said that if we would know the true power of Tillam, we would be saying it every moment of the day. Can you imagine? So thank you early also for emceeing. And I'm always so amazed by the app you created for the Abraham Legacy, which allows women or people all around the world to be completing the Tehillim within moments. So I assume you did that video already where the Tehillim was already completed? We're going to be doing the Tehillim read right after your, right after after your talk. talk. We're going to do great. it all together. It's going to be a nice wrap up. Beautiful. Okay. So I want to also emphasize something which um, the Rebbe pointed out, but there are sources in Gemara for this. 
that it's really good to give tzedakah together with Tehillim. So if you can grab a few coins, or if not after this talk, grab a few coins, put them in the pushka, and say, G'dola tzedakah shnekareves es ha greatest charity because it hastens the redemption. And he said that when we give tzedakah together mm -hmm. with Tehillim, that doubles the impact of both. So since the capital that it shows, no wonder, are of the Rebbe and the Rebbetzin corresponding to their years, I'm going to ask if we first say it just as say, saying the Tehillim, and then I'll go into teaching the lines. So first we have capital of Kuf Beis 122 for the Rebbe, and I'm just here in honor, whatever you like. Um, can you hear me? We can hear you. Kuf Beis 122. Shir Hamalais the David Samachti Ba Omer Li based Adenai Nele. I'm Dais Hayuraglenu Bisharai Rushalayim. Yushalayim Habanuya Kiir Shahubra La Yahta. Shasham Alushvatim Shifiga Edus Yisrael La Haidais the Shame Adenai. Kishama Yashu Kisais the Mishpat Kisais the Vase David. Shalu Shlaim Yushalayim. Yishlayu ay havayich, yishalam b'chilech, shavar b'avan isayich, l'man achai b'rei ay, adar b'na shalam b'ach, l'man b'is adinei elihinu, avach So chapter 122 corresponds to the years of the Rebbe, and every year Hasidim say the new chapter that corresponds to the Rebbe's age, and we move it up on his birthday on the 11th of Nisan. And every time the chapter has a different theme, and the Rebbe used to talk about that theme, this chapter's theme is Gula, how appropriate for these times that we're in now, and of course my favorite topic. Um, by the way, it's also worthwhile to say the Tehillim of your loved ones, of your ancestors, because it actually benefits their neshama. So the heading in the Tehillim is that the psalmist sings the praises of Yerushalayim and tells of the miracles that happened there. And I'll start with the Hebrew. Shir Hamalais le David Samachti ba Omrim Li Beis Hashem Nelech in English. A song of ascent by David. I rejoiced when they said to me, Let us go to the house of Hashem. There's something special about this chapter. Radak tells us that previous chapters, even though they also start with the words Shir Hamalais, if it doesn't say Shir Hamalais le David, they were not necessarily composed by everyone. But since it says Shehermal is Li David, that means that it was specifically composed by him. Now, the question is, David and Melech is saying, I rejoiced when they said, let's go to the house of Hashem. But in the days of David and Melech, there was no base Hamikdash. Why not? We know that David's hands were, were bloodied from war. So although he wanted so much to have a part in it, and he prepared for the Beis HaMikdash, and he raised money for it, but he knew he himself would not be able to build it. It would only be by his son, Shlomo HaMelech. So how could it be that he's saying, I hear people saying that they're happy that they're going to the Beis HaMikdash. So actually, there's an amazing Rashi that tells us and shows the great bitl, the self-nullification of David HaMelech, because he was once walking in the street. And he saw two friends, here were two friends conversing. And one said to the other, I can't wait till David Hamelech passes away so we can build the base Hamikdash. Now imagine he's the king, and hearing such a thing means that they're really married in office. He could have had them killed or at least been very angry at them. But David Avdi, who is so humble, not only was he not angry, he made a whole mizmor just to say how happy he was to hear these words of a Jew saying that they want the Beis HaMikdash, in spite of the fact of what they said before that. Samachti, he was happy to hear this. Now this ties in actually perfectly with today's Mita of the Sphira, which is Malthus Shebavod, which means sovereignty within humility. And this is exactly David HaMelech. Walking humbly is walking tall. Dignity is the essence of humility and modesty. Humility does not suppress the human spirit nor deny individual sovereignty. The splendor of humility is majesty and aristocraticness. The Ebenezer tells us that not only was the Samachti singing about the Beis Hamikdash that would be built in the days of Shlomo HaMelech, but David was also singing in anticipation of the third Beis Hamikdash, and he's happy that Yidin will be singing and happy uh, when we are we, we are envisioning the days of Ola Regal. Now keep in mind, 
of David is envisioning these days that we're in now, we're about, we're approaching the Yemosa Mashiach even before the first base of Mikdash was built. That's how enamored he was with the base of Mikdash. And that's how fascinated he knew Yidin will be with the building of the base of Mikdash. So after every Pesach, I'm just going to do a tiny call to action that we see early on this fascination with the base of Mikdash. So let's start to live that life now that David was happy to envision in his times. Pesach Beis. Which means our feet were standing at your gates, Yerushalayim. This is technically, there was traffic because Yidin were coming and going. Um, and there was actually no room. It was, it was very squishy and they had to wait. Um, but they were so excited about where they were going that they didn't complain about it. Redox is the first groups would come to be either regal, but then they would stop for a bit and turn around at the gateway and see the swarms of people just screaming from all corners. And it was such a sight, spectacular sight to behold. So a call to action here, let's close our eyes and imagine that thousands upon hundreds of thousands of Yidin are gonna come from all around the world with Kibbutz Galias and we'll all be screaming to the Beis HaMikdash, hopefully this year for HaKel when we will go and hear and see the Melech standing and reading from the Torah. Another explanation we have is from Rashi, which says the word on those standing means victorious, victorious in war. War can be with nations or it could be with the Yetzer. And the reason we could be victorious is because that in the gates of Yerushalayim, there is Torah being learned, which brings protection to Eretz Yisrael and particularly to the soldiers. We know spiritual and physical goes together. And this is very much appropriate for now that it's important for the soldiers who are fighting to know this in Yerushalayim, and it's important for those who are learning Torah in Yerushalayim to know that they interact, they're not separate beings, they are each doing their part, and one strengthens the other. The Torah learning of the Chachamim in Yerushalayim and in Eretz Yisrael and all over the world is a protection for the soldiers of Am Yisrael. The Malbim says, that Bisharai Yerushalayim tells us that there's a great value in the trip to Yerushalayim. Some people think there's only value in actually seeing the Beis Hamikdash, but actually it's the trip itself, the journey, that creates appreciation for the experience. Our job now in our Yiddishkeit is also that we should be Eimdais. Where do we get our strength from? From Bisharai Yerushalayim, even the trip itself, the journey itself, even before we reach Beis Hashem. So the call to action there is to know that our journeys and our struggles in life are so precious, sometimes even more than the actual destination. Yerushalayim Yerushalayim that is built is like a city in which all uh, Israel is united together. Radak says that this Pasuk is referring to Yidin and Galus after the Horban of the Beis Hamikdash will say, Oh, Yerushalayim was so glorious, it was so beautiful when we were there, all of us together. How could we ever find such a city again? We're lamenting. It's like a wistful question. But Rashi says, no, we're not talking about how beautiful Yerushalayim was in the past, but David Amelech was speaking about the future Yerushalayim and Beis HaMikdash. And he was saying, don't worry, the time will come in Yerushalayim will be Habinuya, there will be a built Beis HaMikdash, a fully functional Karbanis and the Shechim and the Arin and the, and the Menorah and all the Yidin together. So let's close our eyes, the call to action here. Imagine this now, that we are in a Yerushalayim Havanuya, in a built base of Mikdash, with a Nush and Nush and Betaf, even tiny infants, we're all gathering together there for Hakel to hear the Melech and to bring our Karbanis and Aaron lighting the Menorah. al Sheikh says this is hinting to something deeper. That there's actually based on Mikdash Lamaila and Lamata above and below, and they are attached. So even though the physical building is made from stones, it's really connected with the spiritual building that's in Shemayim. So when we stand in the gateway of Yerushalayim, it's as if we are standing in the gateway of the Beis HaMikdash above. An example of this, a physical example of this, was on Yantif in the Beis HaMikdash, when the Kayin Gadu would say Hashem's name, and everyone would bow down. You know, miraculously, there was space for everyone, even though when they were only standing, there was really space for everyone. How is this so? Because the physicality was not limited, it was beyond physicality. And this clarified that the Beis Hamigash was not simply physical and they understood 
that it was a gateway to Shemayim as well. And the same thing applies to Yerushalayim, that there is a Yerushalayim Shemayla and a Yerushalayim Shemati, which are situated in sync with each other. Something beautiful that Hasidus explains about this Pasuk is that we know nowadays, especially, we're always trying to work on our achtas. Ki'ir shechobra layachtav, it's attached. Yidin are united. What's the secret to this? What the answer, the secret to achtas is in this Pasuk. That if we have Yerushalayim habenuya, then there's achtas. What does this mean? Yerushalayim also comes from the root word of yare shalim, meaning yiras shemayim. When our yiras shemayim is complete, which really most people have this deep down. Every Jew has innate love for Hashem and fear of Hashem, but it has to be habenuya. It has to be built. In other words, we have to work on it and develop it. And when we're not focused on our own identity, but we're only serving Hashem and we only have fear of Hashem, then we can reach achdus because the only obstacle to achdus is if we're feeling ourselves. So the call to action here is let us utilize like this midah of today, the vital, the humility to Hashem of Yerushalayim, the Yerushalayim that have Nuya, we work on developing and that will lead to Achtas because the focus will be on the next one, not on ourselves. Pasuk Dawit, Shesham Lushvatim Shiftei Ka Eidus to Yisrael, Lehaidus Hashem Hashem. For there the tribes went up, the tribes of Hashem is enjoined upon Israel to offer praise to the name of Hashem. And just very technically, Rashi says here, Hashem added his name to each Shevet. Why was it so important? When people heard that Yidin left Mitzrayim, and there were slaves, they assumed that their women also belonged to the Mitzrayim. And if so, it was possible that the next generation may have had Mitzrayim blood in them. So Hashem said, no, he made a, a testament, Edus Yisrael, that because he added his name to each day, that that was proof to the world that they are legitimately directed from the Shvatim. Pasuk Hei, Kishama Yash Kisais Lamishpat Kisais Lebeis David. For the deer stood the seats of justice, the thrones of the house of David. Mamloe says there were the judges of the great Sanhedrin who were seated, but besides these, there were also seats of judgment um, for thrones of base David, which Rambam tells us that the king, Mashiach, could pass judgment in accordance with the special legal powers invested in, in the kings. Rashi says, why is it a kiss ice double? because they won't only judge for the Yidin, Mashiach will also judge for the non-Jews. And when the non-Jews will realize, and they probably are already realizing how much greatness and will come out of the Beis HaMikdash and that there will be judgment, but it will be, will be done fairly and it will bring so much beauty to the world. That's what Yishayo says, that they will all flock to it. They will love the Beis HaMikdash and they will all want to join us there. Radak also says, Kisai Slash and Rabin, why? Very fascinating. He says one kisa is for the Shechina and one is for Malchus based David, for the king. Now, David is speaking here about the times of Mashiach when the judges will once again be seated on the thrones of judgment like the Sanhedrin, as in the past, but also Melech HaMashiach will sit as a refiner and a purifier of B'nai Yisrael, that it says Malachi. And at the times of Gula, there will continue to be a place for both a cheer for the Shekhinah, so to speak, and for Mahlis based David. What does that mean? This leads nicely into the al who continues with his theme of what we said before, that there's a Mikdash above and a Mikdash below. The seat that Shlomo HaMelech will sit on, that he sat on, is actually Hashem's chair. It's Hashem's throne. Now, how can we say such a thing? It sounds a little bit like a Vedazara. Our ears can't listen to such a thing, but from this puzzle, we can understand the truth in it, that every chair in the base HaMikdash is connected to the Kisei Shalomayla of Hashem. And if the Melech Yisrael is sitting on the chair, it's a reflection Lamayla of Hashem's Kisei. So there are two places to sit, the Kisei Shalomayla and Mata. The Shechina and the Ashbais that come Lamayla affect the physical world and vice versa, the judgment that's made down here by the king is accepted above. By David and all those which were fitting to following from base David, sitting in the base Amigash was if they were sitting in the Kisei Nomaila. And here I'm just going to make a tiny plug, if Arlie could put in the chat box, um, to contact either uh, join Welcome Mashiach or you could even text me and I'll just say my phone number slowly and early. I don't know if you could follow and type it in the chat 323 495 3010 because I'm going to be continuing a series called All In. 
which actually describes the unique relationship between a chassid and a rebbe, primarily to prove that it's not fanaticism and it's not a vedazara, the way we flock to our leaders or each type of chassid to their rebbe, because we see that even in the times of the melech, it's interconnected and they're they're not they're not separable. The machlus of Hashem and the machlus of Mashiach or the leaders. We of can't hear you, Rifki. Oh, since when? For how long? Oh, no, I can, can hear you. I can, can hear, hear you. you. Sorry, <laughs> you're that was scary. Okay, um, so I'm just saying I'm this, this group that I'm going to be explaining delving into this topic a little bit more. So when you join the Welcome Mashiach, that uh, early post of the chat too, or if you can also get my number. In, in there, you can text me and say, I'd like to join this group. I'm fascinated to learn more about the relationship between a chassid and a rebbe or, or our relationship with our future Melech HaMashiach. Chassid Vav, Shalu Shleim Yerushalayim, Shleo Ayhavayich. Pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. May those who love you have peace. May Amloiz is saying, don't only daven for the sake of Yerushalayim, daven for the peace of everyone who loves her. Daven to Hashem for the peace of Yerushalayim can also refer to Kibbutz Goliath because then the city will know peace. Right now we know no peace because Yerushalayim is having to wage war against its enemies. But if we daven for Shlaim Yerushalayim, then there will be, which will, there will be Kibbutz Goliath, there will be peace, there will no longer be enemies. Malvin says, just like a physical body can only function if all the limbs are intact and working together in sequence with each other it could survive, the same is when we ask Yerushalayim, Shalu Shlaim Yerushalayim, we're asking Yerushalayim, how are you? She will answer, my peace depends on Yishlayu Ayavayich. If Yidin are ba'achtos internally, this will impact the peace in Yerushalayim. So the call to action here, the main idea of Yerushalayim is the Achdus of Klal Yisrael. And as we know, the base of was destroyed due to Sinas Chinam and will be rebuilt due to unconditional love. May there be peace within your walls and serenity within your mansions. Again, if you live B'Shalem outside Yerushalayim, B'Chelech, the walls, there will be shalom in Yerushalayim, in your mansions, in your palaces. This is referring to the Yidin, but the Malin takes us a step further and says there's shalom and shalva. Shalom is external peace with the outside nations, and shalva is internal peace among the Yidin. As long as there will be shalva, Paninius, and internal peace where we are all getting along with Ahava and Achlis between us, that will cause the Yidin to have shalom, which is the external peace with their enemies. Now, of course, we know that peace does not mean making concessions or giving away land to our enemies, but only to show our enemies to be self-sufficient and resort to self-care instead of terrorism. The victory over the Gayim comes from the Achtas of the women. And we see this theme repeated over and over in this chapter, which is such as Kashkachapratis of all the current events in Eretz Yisrael. Now, I'm sure you've been following the news, and Arlie, if you want to um, post that link to this um, um, fascinating website that keeps us posted of the real news that's actually going on play by play in Eretz Yisrael, there's been tremendous, tremendous miracles. And thanking Hashem for these will elicit more miracles, and recognizing that this is only a small taste of the miracles to come brings Mashiach closer by, by publicizing the miracles and strengthening our belief in the imminence of Mashiach. Now, I kept thinking as I was preparing that I need at least one really juicy story to spice things up, and I couldn't choose one, and then I decided instead I'm going to share something a little personal here, just because it fit, fits so well with the theme of this capital, about the walls of Yerushalayim and about Shalom. Many of you know, my mother recently passed away, and since my father had passed away 11 years ago, the time came to leave go of our home base in Cran Heights, which was over 50 50 years. And my parents were very humble, like the Mida of, of uh, today. They were not egotistical. They were very peace loving. And it wasn't easy for them to achieve raising a large family, especially the majority of which were active boys. You know. But we truly tested their legacy um, recently when we had to sell the home. We, my family all did a dance around the house when we said goodbye. We sang Kiva Simcha Seitzayim because the walls felt holy, like the walls of the Beis Hamikdash. Let's say they were filled with love and devotion and, and comfort, and physically and spiritually, everything was, was organized. In retrospect, I realized how difficult that, you know, how challenging that could be. But they built a home of love, like the walls of Yerushalayim, and there was peace 
was shalom bechelech. And the proof of that was when the family got together to go through, you know, the valuables and you know, the sparim and the silver and, and the jewelry and everything, we were told that unfortunately many times families, especially large families, end up squabbling somewhat. And we found that actually we, the only squabbling was People were saying, no, you take this. No, you should have it. No, I, one of my sisters said, I can't sleep at night until I know that everyone's happy, that everyone got something that they are happy with. Um, peace oh. starts in our homes, within our families, in our Dalit Amis. And then there's peace in Eretz Yisrael and among Am Yisrael, and we are protected. Call to action here, I urge you. If at any reason whatsoever, you're not on talking terms with a relative, a friend, a neighbor, you probably don't even remember why, just pick up the phone and call them or send a text or even a sticker. It's so easy now with these emojis and stickers just as a start and Hashem will help in big ways. And Pasuk Ches, These are famous songs to these words and there's a camp called Lamanachai. For the sake of my brethren and friends, I ask there be peace within me. Radak says, In times of Gullus, we say, that in the merit and benefit of the Yidin who were exiled from Yerushalayim, for their sake, I am talking about the peace. And the Yidin should be returned and be able to rest once again in Yerushalayim because we went through so much destruction and so much pain and so much suffering. But Mr. Dostav, it says further, how should we request for Mashiach? While we're in Golos, we should actually not only request for Mashiach for ourselves, but we should request for Mashiach for the next one and for Klal Yisrael with Abbas Yisrael, because when we ask not just for ourselves, but we ask for others, Hashem will be Neskabo Baratzin faster. The al in continuation with his theme, David's emphasis is on Yerushalayim and the base of Mikdash below, but Hashem says, why are you only talking about this Amidish in Yerushalayim? What about Achai Berei'ai? Hashem is calling us his children, Achai Berei'ai. You children are Amechum Tzadikim. You, you are also precious to me. I say Yerushalayim benefits from Kala Yisrael because the Yidin are there. David is focused on the covet of Hashem and he's saying that it's Yerushalayim that makes us holy, that makes us peaceful. But Hashem is saying, no, my covet is the Yidin. So we each do our part. When we love someone, we think about what's most important to them and what makes them great. Hashem speaks of our greatness and we speak of his greatness. Okay, and for the sake of Hashem, I seek your well-being. Radak says, we're speaking about the Beis HaMikdash that was built, the man Beis Hashem, and that Hashem brings us good because we once had a Beis HaMikdash in the past. But Mitzvah the Savit says, why should Gideon in Yerushalayim have Shalom? Because there will be in the future a Beis HaMikdash, and it therefore it's deserving that we should have peace already now in Yerushalayim because of the Beis HaMikdash that's the cup. I'm almost done here with this capital. The Malbim gives a deeper explanation. There are things which are apparently good that you could visibly see. If you look at Jerusalem even now, or, or all the, the beautiful cities, Tzvas, and all the settlements, and, and Ir David, it's so beautiful to see it united. It's everywhere you look, there's people are caring about each other, and, and hopefully even, even now, <laughs> there's a little bit of the inner conflict, but we, we all saw that famous video when the protesters came to Bnei Brak and they were greeted with all this warm, delicious food, and the from the Yidin that have been protesting, actually, they were just uniting and doing shuva and calling out to Hashem. This is so beautiful, but we have to also know the spiritual beauty that comes from Beis Hashem. There is a tov, there's a hidden holiness that we have to work to achieve. We have to seek, we have to search, we have to work and develop because Kedusha does not come easily, it has to be worked for. Avat Shetayibach, we have to seek Hashem. Yud Nisan in 5731, there was a surprise for bringing when the Rebbe returned from the aisle. Very often those days, people didn't know when they would be for bringing. There was hardly anyone there who wasn't set up and they managed to grab a tape recorder and just a tiny tidbit, the Rebbe said a mimer on the words, Biyom Ashte Asar, on the 11th day, there was a small story he said that there was a big chacham in a town. When the king came to visit this town with his ministers, the chacham said, I want the king himself in Aramaic. It's Ana Nasiv Malka. I don't want the ministers. I don't want the servants. I want the king himself. Now we wonder what's the great wisdom of this person. Of course we want the king as opposed to the ministers who are only an extension of the king. And if they wrong the king, he could just get rid of them. So of course we would want the king. What's so great about this Chacham? So actually what we said before, it's not simple. Holiness and connection to our king comes only through avoda and sacrifice and his sponina to give up even the highest levels of kedusha, which are giluyim, which are the garments of the king, 
We only want you, Hashem. Ananasik Maka, we choose the king without the garments, without the concealment. The Alter Rebbe was famous. It says in a Yom Yom, he would say this quote, Ich will nicht dein Eilam haba, ich will nicht dein Ganeiden, ich will nicht dein Eilam haba, ich will nicht dich allein. I only want you, Hashem, you in your essence without any concealment. So the call to action here is that we must demand from ourselves, Ananasik Maka, as the Pasuk said here, Avakshutai Vlach, we are seeking you, Hashem. We only want you, Einag Milvada. We want the king himself. And the glory of Yisod Shabimachus should shine, and may that day be today. And us women are making it happen faster with kindness and with mercy. May it be now. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I absolutely love your passion. As you know, this is the thing that connected us so much. Um, already now, our, the passion for, for, for Mashiach, for the Geula, I think all of us here, we feel it, we're in it, we know it's, it's, it's here, it's coming, uh, and it's up to each and every one of us to do our part. What I love most is the practical things that you gave, that you mentioned throughout the talk, that we can all do. Uh, I, I jotted some of them down, the one that really resonated with me, that, and again, uh, each and every one of you can take something upon yourself. But one of the things that we're talking about as being so important is that after we hear these talks and after we're feeling inspired, not to let that inspiration go to waste, but to take an action on it right away. Right away. Don't even wait till tomorrow morning if it's evening by you or like, right away. Uh, whether it's like you mentioned, you know, when we're going to be doing Tehillim, going and giving a sedaka, or whether the thing that resonated most with me is picking up the phone and calling somebody who maybe we haven't been in contact with or you may have had a dispute with. It's such a tremendous thing. It's really a tremendous thing. And if you don't nice feel... Is, it'll, take a, yeah. it'll take a rock off your, your own heart. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So I tell good. you, it's, it is the best feeling. I've done it in the past. It's so good to do. Somebody, it doesn't have to be somebody you had a dispute with. It also could just be, you know, I'm not saying... Oh, it could be somebody you haven't spoken to in a long time, you know? That simple action really opens the door to so much. And if you're feeling shy or you're feeling embarrassed, even if you send a small message, it's better to make the phone call. It's better to pick up the phone and actually call and hear somebody's voice. But even if you send the message, you never know what that's going to lead to. Especially we're about to go into Shabbat. What a, what a tremendous thing. What a tremendous thing. So Take something. And also, I'm sorry, excuse me, that no, I didn't mention that actually, the days of Sfira are actually all about that because we know why the students of Rabbi Akiva, they were very holy and they were very, you know, devoted to Rabbi Akiva, but why did they pass away? They didn't have enough. So these are the days to also work extra increasing our Abbas Yisrael. And even if we're self-righteous and it's like, oh, I really just, you know, I need to teach the other person because I know more than them. No, we're all one. And some of us grew up with Yiddishkeit and some didn't, and it wasn't by our choice. It was just our, you know, our mazel, let's say, to grow up this way. And if we know an Aleph and a base and someone else just knows an Aleph, teach them. That's also a form of a Yisrael. Have confidence that you have what to give to others. A hundred percent. And to realize at the end of the day, you know, Hashem is the judge. I, I don't want his job. I don't know why anybody else would. I don't want that job. That's a very hard job. I'm not interested in it. I'm not applying for it anytime soon. It, our job is just to love yeah just to love love people fall in i always say it's just like literally something that's written on i don't know where i put it says my job is to fall in love with people more and more each day seriously that's what i think my job is, is to fall in love with people more and more each day because you can't err on the side of kindness to just love to embrace what do you think hashem says oh you love this person that's not you love people these are every person every Everything in this world is created by Hashem. So the more that we love others, it just shows Hashem how much we love him. It makes him psyched. He gets very excited. Uh, Arlie reminds me, I remember you saying this on one of our programs, you said something that it's actually easier to love than not to love. It, it's so much easier. It takes, it takes much less energy to love. You sleep much better, as for sure. You sleep <laughs> much better. You're much happier. You're smiling a lot more. So... I, I know that it's difficult. Sometimes we can come into conflict with people uh, and, and we might feel like we have real reason to be upset. It's not easy. I'm, it's, I'm not saying that, that that's easy to do. But if you, I, 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 I wish that all of us, after we get off, will pick up the phone and call someone. We're, we're here with 37 people. You know how much impact that has? The, the impact that one action has? 
Like literally, this is why I start everything that, you know, I, I, the, I have to send you all this film. It's a film I created from 12 years ago. It's a short film. And it shows an act of kindness going from one person to the next, to the next, to the next, and coming back to the person that started it. And this film is all based on real life experiences that I personally went through. Really simple, small things. Okay. I put this film online back in 2011. I knew nothing about technology. I didn't even know what I was doing. I, I uploaded it to YouTube. I had no subscribers. I didn't have any money marketing it, nothing. And you know what happened? It reached over a hundred million people. A hundred million people. That's crazy. Whoa, you, you gotta be we, kidding. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Rifki, did you ever see no. it? No. Oh my God. You have to send it to me. I'll send, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. And I have to tell you, it's simple things that you're going to see in this, in this film. Maybe the next, maybe on the next, uh, in our next session, or perhaps right at, at our last session, I'll actually show it to all of you and share with you a little bit, a little bit Please deeper do. about this film. Please and it's, do. it's these small actions that we take, we never know how far they'll go. And I speak about the actual people in the film. You only see them on the screen for five seconds. And every one of them has a very big backstory. You don't know what's going on in another person's life. You have no idea, even the person closest to you. It could be your brother, your sister, your mother, your father. You have no idea what's going on in the heart of a person. So the small thing that you do, absolutely crazy. So let's, let's take this upon ourselves. And Bezrat Hashem, Hashem sees this. He sees the efforts we're making. We can make, that's why I started the organization. I didn't have to tell you, that's a whole other story. I'll tell you guys another time. You need for a brain. You have to make started it to, to do uh, what? To shake the foundations of the world with the power of chesed. That's the essence of this world. Well, chesed it's built upon chesed. That's it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So I, I just want to thank you so much, Rifki, for reminding us of this very important message, giving us I, I, practical I, things that we can do. And uh, I also saw, excuse me, someone in the chat please. asked, what's the pasuk to say when you give the tzedakah? So I'll just repeat it. And if yes, you want, please you can do. write it down. I'm trying to use the Hebrew. Great is charity because it hastens the Geula. And actually, remember now, I didn't do the next capital on 23, but the main theme of that capital, which is to the Rebbitsons, is Ad Masai. So if we can say it together, because we have so much power now, and the Rebbe constantly asked us to scream out. He said, if we truly meant it from our full heart, even if there were, you know, 10 people, three people, one person, that means it was sincerely with their whole heart. And I heard recently Charlie Harari, I didn't get to listen to it, but the main point he spoke about with the Total Tzachafres Nisan, when the Rebbe said, do all you can, he said, the Chavre Mashiach was already, it's over. It's Mashiach is a done deal. We have it. So what's left? We have to want it. We have to crave it. We have to seek it. So let's say together now three times. Ad Masai. Ad Masai. Ad Masai. We want Mashiach now. Amen, now on our amen. terms, literally. Amen. Amen. You know, I have I just want to share one more thing that just came up. It was I was at a, a Shabbat lunch. I was so shocked by this. I don't know if anybody's so to me. The biggest constant in my life uh, is my yearning for Gula. Really, really, when I say, I really mean it. Like I remember myself, four-year-old kid, my dad tucking me into bed. This was really, if you could say, like, what's the one memory that you have, or like that one? That's my biggest constant in my life. And every decision I make, starting whether it's life as inside or Abraham's legacy or doing the tila, all of them, if you get to the bottom of it, is all connected to just wanting. Hashem said, okay, I had a little small dot in helping to bring the Gula. I, even if I had a small dot, I'm happy. I'm very, very excited. Okay. And this past, I think it was this past Shabbat, it was the last Shabbat. I was, I was by somebody's house. Um, and I, at the end of the, at the end of the meal, and I was telling them about, you know, some of the projects that I'm doing and how excited I am. And I said something and I ended off saying, you know, I, I can't wait. Bezrat Hashem, all of this is going to help to bring the Gula Mashiach. And they said, what's with you talking about? And they were, they were observant people, observant. I'm talking about observant people, okay? They said, what, what are you, Chabadnik or something? I said, no. <laughs> I, I, said, I said, I'm Jewish. You need Chabad to want Mashiach. I said, I said to them, I said, I'm Jewish. I don't know. I said, I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, what, what is everybody talking about? Read the Birkat Amazon that we say. Read 
The Amida we say every single day. Every single thing is talking about. The Animamens that we say every day. Animamen b'munashlema. If he doesn't come today. Everything. Achakelo b'chol yom shayom. Achakelo. I say all the time. Achakelo. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Achakelo. Everything we say is all surrounded by that. And I, I, I got so sad when I walked out. I said, that's crazy. Because this is somebody like that's observant, right? And are, are people not waiting for the Mashiach? Are, are we not excited? Do we not really feel it? Because it's in our power to, to, to bring it. Hashem just wants to see what we the actually purpose want. Of the entire, it's the purpose of the entire world's creation. So like we're going towards a destination, but then they're getting sidetracked and forgetting that that's where the ultimate goal of the, the whole purpose why Hashem created the world is to get to that point where Enod Novato. So it's like, you're going somewhere, but you're forgetting where you're going. You're just we getting can't. distracted. By and it's all about not giving up on the hope because sometimes it could, it, you know, wow, we've been waiting for so long. Okay, we have, it's here, it's here. We have to continue to hope for it, continue because only through that can we actually bring the time of the Gula. And the time of the Gula, more than anything, I have a sign here. It's here in my, in my um, over here, it says, see, this is my favorite pasuk, see the nations turn their swords into plowshares. Wow. Mm. See the nations that, that we're going to be able. Do you understand this concept of? Because that's what we're all meant to do. We're all meant to be connected. We're all meant to help each other. What an incredible time, where all of these, you know, the, the ideas and the feelings of negativity or jealousy, all that fades away because we understand. We see the the, the truth, and we recognize that I don't have to. You know, you don't have to be down for me to be up. I'm up because I'm lifting you up and we're lifting each other up. We're keeping each other afloat. And there's enough. There's enough in the world for everybody. There's enough. Sometimes we can look at people's successes and we can feel, oh, why am I? Not? There's enough. Hashem is in charge. He can make everybody, he can, everything is there. We just have to realize it and embrace one another. So, uh, Sorry, I, I went. I, I just, I was very excited. It's I love like, everything. I'm drinking I, it all up. <laughs> Thank you. This is like my, I, I just, because this is so much why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's why it's I so do it. inspiring to hear this. And like you were saying, you know, it's not about Chabad or not Chabad, but I, I want, I know it, with our interactions, you always had this passion. I was wondering, like, where do you get this from? <laughs> Honestly, up by the Rebbe, my like, earliest you know, memory, I don't know. I don't, wow. my father is a person of tremendous faith. I love my father very much. He's, I love my mother also very, very much. My father is such a hum humble man. And growing up, he was always talking, you know, always like, you know, putting us to bed with like stories of, of Gula and stories of Eliyahu Navi. Eliyahu Navi is wow. like, I'm so connected to the character of Eliyahu Navi. I love, I love Eliyahu Navi. And I, I don't know. It's been just my biggest passion. Um, ever since I can remember. It's all I was talking about with Hashem. Is it going to come? And I, I remember as a little kid, I'm like, Hashem, I'm coming for my, my brother's bar mitzvah or my cousin's bar mitzvah. Please let it come when I'm there. I, I, would get, I was always very, very, very um, excited about it. And I hope that never changes. I think, so. I, mean, I think something also important before we get off here is to never feel discouraged. Like, oh, we tried and it didn't work. We daven and we daven and it wasn't. We didn't. No, the Mavit says that every single tear, every single tefillah, every word is stacked upon thousands of years of, of tears and of pleading and crying and yearning for Mashiach. And there may just be that one last tefillah that's going to hit the ball out of the park. So don't feel discouraged because we are doing it. It is happening. And another thing I just want to point out because it came through my mind, you could look at all the crazy news in the world and you can get very discouraged or you could look at all the miracles that are happening. And I say always, instead of watching the news, create the news. I love you know, it. What we do now and every word of Tehillim we say and all the actors, everything we are creating you could literally see tremendous news. And you could read if that earlier you were able to put the link there that tells everything since this operation, what is it called? shield and arrow and shield um how they went in it started like Omer, and the missiles that are coming are just landing in open places or they're landing in a place where there were children there but then they left already and it's great like unbelievable spectacular news man we are our words now our achtis now our mitzvahs our penny in the pushka literally we could be saving lives so we have to just keep at it and we're we're almost there we're at the finish line and we know that right before shabbos we don't start new projects we're not like sweating and shopping and cooking we're already with dress with our shape on and just putting the finishing touches ready to bring in shabbos mashiach is yom shekule shabbos and we're now literally Arab Shabbos, we're right before. So like, that's our main focus now. 
and Hashem is just going to give it to us. He amen, to amen, us. amen. Vezrat Hashem. So let's, we're going to do a Tihilim now all together in unison. Please join in, grab your, your uh, you know, grab your smartphone if you have one. If you don't have one, don't worry. Okay. Grab your Tihilim book. What the we we're going to be, we're going to be, so I'm going to share a video now. It's going to show how to read Tihilim together through this app. If you don't have the app, it'll explain to you how to get it. If it's difficult for you, or you don't necessarily know how to use the technology, that's okay for now. You can read whatever chapter you like, but the app will show, the video will show you what to do. And if you want to reach out to me afterwards, I am around. I answer all my messages. Okay, so you can send me a message. I'm going to put you my uh, my WhatsApp number over here. Okay, I, and I can guide you through it. Even if you're not uh, tech savvy, don't worry. I, I I I love teaching people not tech savvy how to be tech savvy. But it's really amazing because this allows us to finish the book in unison in six minutes. We're going to try and do it right now. We're going to do it right now. So everyone grab your uh, grab your phone. And then most importantly, after we get off, right after we get off, do something. In the first minute that we get off, send a message. Even if it's short, do something right then. It's going to make all the difference. Okay, here we go. On behalf of Abraham's legacy, we are excited to lead you in a Tehillim reading, where each and every one of us, from wherever we are in the world, can easily join in and complete a book of Tehillim in unison, within minutes, through a very special app called Abraham's Legacy, Tehillim Together, in memory of Avraham ben Polin. To be part of the global Tehillim read happening now, download Abraham's Legacy on your mobile device from the App Store, available for iOS and Android. You can also scan this QR code with your phone. To scan a QR code, simply open the camera on your phone and hold it up to this image. A link will appear on top, which you can click, and it will direct you to download the app. I'll give you all a moment to download the app. Sign in. And in a minute, we will all click on the Start Reading button on the main screen, and each of us will receive a different peric from the Sefer of Tehillim so that we can complete the book and add to the global count. In the top right corner, you can click the icon to switch your language if you like. You'll also be able to see in real time the amount of people reading and countries reading. Don't forget, you'll need to confirm that you've completed the chapter. Let's put a few minutes on the clock to read in unison so that we can unleash the power of our combined tefillah. Tiskul mitzvot. I'm 
שלי נקרא לי שניים, מה שלא ראתה שפחה על המים, כמו סופה מן הים עולה, כמו תופה של מרים פועם, ואין תרופה בעולם. הלב שלי מרים ידיים, כבר מועד לא עומד על הרגליים, שבר כלי שאין בו כבר מה, והשמיים הם בלי חומה, איך אבוא בתוך הים. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לרכך בי הכל. ורק אתה מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי, משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את הלב. שלי נקרא לי שניים, חציו השם וחציו לשם שמיים, כמו סופה מן הים עולה, כמו תופה של מרים פועם, ואין תרופה בעולם ללב. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לרכך בי הכל. ורק אתה מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי, משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את יש אוצר שמציק לצאן, ואין ציר שיצעק לצור. רק אני מול ים שלם ולב שבור. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לרכך בי הכל. ורק אתה... מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי, משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את הלב. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לקדש בי הכל. ורק אתה מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי. And you can go ahead and complete the pedic that you're on. We're literally at the end because I just clicked and I have a pedic kuf mem hey. So we have just five prakim left till we get to the end. And I see that we had people on. We have 22 people reading from five countries at the same time. Just how amazing is that? You know, one part of the reason, you know, part of the reason of having this is my dream 
is to be able to have all of Am Yisrael from all over the world in all languages. Imagine clicking and you're seeing 100,000 people reading with you or half a million people or 5 million people reading at the same time that in a second you could be finishing 613 books of Tehillim. How crazy. That's my dream. That's literally where I'm heading. That's where I want to be. Uh, and Vizrat Hashem, that will happen. And I love your help to get there. And it's really simple to share this, to share this. This is a free resource. Share it with friends, with family. If there's any issues you're having, let me know. There are loads of things that I'm looking to incorporate. So many exciting features. I know that it takes time because uh, these things require uh, money. but Bezrat Hashem, we will get there. Uh, but please do share it with people and let them know. And another way that you can help also to support is you can take part in our in our uh, raffle that's at the end of the festival. On May 22nd, at the end of the festival, we're going to be doing a raffle with a lot of exciting prizes, copies of books from our speakers, the 100% pure copper and a cup. Uh, you'll have a peric in the app that's going to be dedicated to your loved one. And you'll have that peric for the year. For the whole year, you'll have that peric uh, with thousands upon thousands of books being read. A free tour in the city of David and so many more things. And so to enter, all we ask is to make a minimum donation of $18. Uh, and every time that you do, you'll have another entry into the raffle. You could do it by going to abrahamslegacy.com slash donate. You can also enter by dedicating a chapter, which so many of you have done. And I thank you for doing that. Basically, when you dedicate a chapter, you can dedicate it for the week or for the month. It's $54 for the week, $180 for the month. And then your loved one's name will be on that chapter uh, that will appear on all of the members' app. That's almost 20,000. And we're finishing, like I said, hundreds of books a month. So think of the Zechuyot. Uh, so you have the opportunity. And if you do dedicate a chapter up until May 22nd, you're also automatically, obviously, incorporated uh, in the raffle. Uh, you could see the full list of raffle prizes on our website. And the link to donate I mentioned is abrahamslegacy.com forward slash donate. But if you have questions for me, you have suggestions, uh, something isn't working right for you, reach out to me, info at abrahamslegacy.com. I want to hear from you. Uh, this is a team effort. And I would love for you all to be my teammates in doing that. And I thank you all so much for your support. I want to Thank Rifki again for her beautiful, exciting, empowering uh, message. Bezrat Hashem, we all are going to take part in doing something right after we get off. Tiny, tiny, tiny. And Bezrat Hashem, through all of our efforts, we have the ability to make Mashiach a reality now, now for us, and build the Bet HaMikdash of Mata so it matches the one Shalmala with all the small acts of kindness that we do. We have the ability to do that. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Rifki. And I also want to remind you. My pleasure. Uh, it's a, it's I, always I a pleasure to, to have you. Hatzlacha. I want to wish you amazing Hatzlacha beyond your wildest imagination of uniting the world through the words of Tehillim. That's the perfect recipe for Mashiach. And I see we have 36 this. women on here. That's two times high. So we can just think also of everyone who needs Rufur Shalema, the Tehillim we said, those who need Shadduchim, children, whoever, everybody needs something. And also, if we could have in mind a um, little boy, three-year-old who, who drowned and really needs a miracle, Chaim, Rafael Chaim Meir Betzima Chasha. Rafael, say the name one more time, Rafael. Rafael, they added the name Rafael Chaim Meir Ben Sima Chasha. And maybe everyone can say or think the names of people that need Rafu Shlema. And uh, through the tilling we just said, it could be retroactive that to bring refuas and yeshuas to all who need. Bezrat Hashem. And right now we know also on Israel, where are we in Israel specifically, we need to we need tefillot as much as possible. Every tefillah counts, every single tefillah. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much. I want to remind all of you that uh, we don't have a session on Sunday. So uh, if you might get confused and you'll come on to Zoom, but we do have a session on Monday and we're going to be hearing from Tara Mizrahi, uh, one of our Abraham's Legacy members, and also from Jessica Klein Weisenberg. Uh, and last thing I want to mention, I'm going to put this in the chat. Uh, one of our members and a very dear friend of mine, Jessica Savitt, has uh, an incredible blog that she started. She is a not only a fantastic writer, but she writes with her whole heart, and she's just a wonderful person. I want to place her link over here. It's jessicasavitt.blogspot.com, but she has some beautiful, beautiful um, 
um, entries and a new one that she just po posted today. So you can check it out on this link. Um, and, and it's a great way to um, to really be connected to Amisra because she shares a lot of really wonderful, uh, wonderful stories there and her experience in this incredible land. So thank you all very much again. Remember, tefillah, it changes us. And when we change, you got it. Our whole world changes. Love you all. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>